Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, we'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Reigns Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Reigns Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 62 in the Dewey Reigns Bible, but Psalm 63 in the RSV. A Psalm of David when he was in the desert of Adam. As we covered a couple psalms ago, Adam was one of the places that David and his men conquered later in life, and it was located in a desert region. O oh God, my God, to thee do I watch at break of day. For thee my soul hath thirsted, for thee my flesh. Oh, how many ways! I long for God, body and soul, in countless ways. In a desert land, and where there is no way, and no water, so in the sanctuary have I come before thee, to see thy power and thy glory. I am in the desert, losing my way and running out of water, so I came to worship God, in the hopes of receiving some kind of amazing solution. For thy mercy is better than lives. Thee my lips shall praise. Thus will I bless thee all my life long, and in thy name I will lift up my hands. I'll worship God for the rest of my life, because the mercy of God is better than anything else. Let my soul be filled, as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Please let me be full of everything helpful, good, fulfilling, and everything that promotes good health, so that I can praise you with joy. If I have remembered thee upon my bed, I will meditate on thee in the morning, because thou hast been my helper, and I will rejoice under the covert of thy wings. Covert of thy wings refers to the protection of a mother bird for its young. In short, this means that I'll keep God in mind before bed so that I remember to reflect on him in the morning because he helps and protects me, bringing me joy. My soul hath stuck close to thee. Thy right hand hath received me. The right hand refers to both the confidant who has the position closest to a king and to the hand which holds the sword in battle. This verse, therefore, most likely means that God allows us to draw close to him by reaching out to us peacefully with his sword in its sheath. In other words, that he has no intention of causing harm to his faithful. But they have sought my soul in vain. They shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall be delivered into the hands of the sword. They shall be the portions of foxes. They are people who oppose the will of God. They'll be slain by force, fed to wild animals, and end up in the ground as a result of their choices, failing to cause harm to the faithful in the process. All of this imagery implies death, pain, and failure, the ultimate destiny of those who decide to be God's enemies. But the king shall rejoice in God, and they shall be praised that swear by him, because the mouth is stopped of them that speak wicked things. Deceivers and other evildoers will ultimately be forced to shut up, and that will end up benefiting the faithful who will finally be appreciated for praising God as they should. All the remaining rulers will obey God joyfully once they realize the truth. This verse also reminds me of the story of Naaman, a military commander who was overjoyed to be healed of his leprosy by God after doing what the prophet Elisha told him to in 2 Kings chapter 5. He swore he would never worship any god other than the Lord, though out of service to his king he'd still have to go through the motions of kneeling in the temple of his king's god Rimon, and hoped he'd be forgiven for that. Elisha seemed to think he would be. Aside from mourning bad circumstances, this psalm has a little of everything. Pleas for blessings and protection, descriptions of good choices made in the past about a proper relationship with God, predictions about the fates of both just and unjust people, and of course, worship and plans for future worship. It's a nice all-around psalm with an overall positive message. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.